was Jesus based on the Semitic god Baal Hadad. Baal was a northwest Semitic storm god that appeared frequently in the Hebrew Bible as an idol that many Israelites began to sinfully worship. However, Richard Carrier alleges Baal was one of the most ancient of resurrected gods, and in a myth known as the Baal Cycle, the god is definitely dead. There are then clear references to Baal's resurrection. However, this is not a clear representation of what scholars say about Baal. There is actually an interesting debate among scholars on whether or not Baal was a dying and rising god. Carrier strongly implies the debate has already been settled, but this is simply not true. Some scholars like Trigve Medinger or Dag Encio believe Baal was a dying and rising god. But many scholars argue Baal actually was not, and just something like a disappearing god. Trigbe Medinger, Carrier's own source, even says, As for the Ugritic Baal, there is obviously no consensus. Some scholars hold that he only disappears, like Telepinu. Others, that there are references to death, but that it is only a substitute that is killed by Mott. While some, again, seem to regard Baal as a dying and rising deity. Carrier also references Medinger and says, His return to life and then living forever are used as analogies in pre-Christian immortality spells. I am not sure where Carrier sees this. Menninger doesn't mention immortality spells, only that the tale of Akat may allude to yearly ritualistic procedures concerning Baal's death and return. But Menninger also notes this is very tenuous and based on limited data. In no sense can we even be remotely certain of this, and Menninger doing good scholarly work, notes other scholars who even disagree on this. So Carrier is not representing the scholarly literature accurately. This is not really settled, and it is a highly debated topic, mainly because our information on Baal is limited and sometimes fragmented. For example, scholars like J.C. Damore and John C.L. Gibson argue Baal is not killed by Mott. Instead, Mott is tricked into eating a substitute. Hans Barstad, Jay-Z Smith, and Mark Smith argue Baal is just a disappearing god, like the Hittite storm god Telepinu. But Medinger does mount an admiral case that Baal is a dying and rising god, relying on three sources. One is from a passage found in the tale of Akat. In this text, the goddess Anat wants the bow of Akat, and in exchange, she offers him immortality. He refuses, and later she kills him for it. But there is one line in the exchange that might refer to Baal being revived. Menninger translates this as, I shall let you count your years with Baal, count your months with the sons of El, like Baal, as he is revived. One makes a banquet for the one that is being revived. However, this is far from certain. Menninger is even honest and admits this. The passage in question contains a number of interpretive problems. As Mark Smith notes, it really depends on if the verb was meant to be passive. Also, other translators don't see it this way. Baruch Margolet translates this passage as, I will let thee count thy years with Baal. You'll count months with the divinities. Whoever lives as Baal lives, life has served him. It has served him and he drinks of it. James Pritchard translates this passage as, I'll make thee count years with Baal, with the sons of El, thou shalt count months. And Baal, when he gives life, gives a feast, gives a feast to the life given, and bids him drink. I would suggest these translations are probably more accurate given the context. And not as offering a cot the chance to live with Baal eternally, and celebrate with the gods. In this part of the text, a cot has not yet died, so he doesn't need to be revived. He is being offered immortal life with Baal, not to be revived like Baal. This is not to say that Medinger's translation is wrong, just less parsimonious given the context and the interpretive problems of the text. Medinger also refers to KTU 112, which does refer to Baal's death, where he is killed during a hunt by two monsters called Rippers or Devourers but it is unrelated to the Baal Cycle, or the Tale of Akkad, and is a different legend altogether. P. 
pagan gods often had contradictory legends. This one also doesn't refer to a return from the dead, but it is clear in some legends that Baal does die. Finally, Menninger draws heavily on the Baal cycle, which may refer to Baal dying as well. One of the main problems of the Baal cycle though is that it's highly fragmented, with key passages missing. Basically, this text has a section that refers to Baal descending to the underworld to fight the god of death, Mott. He allegedly is swallowed by Mott and his body is later buried. Mott is then killed by a knot and Baal returns to take his place as ruler of the gods. But key passages are missing. So for example, J.C. Damore argues the missing passages probably references a twin brother who descends to the underworld and dies. Now this is possible, but we really don't know. The main problem is the missing section containing what happens to Baal after he descends to the underworld. Because the god Mott claims to have swallowed Baal, but Anat finds his body at the edge of the world. So did Baal really die? Did Mott or the other gods get some facts wrong? Menninger suggests Baal's descent to the underworld is a metaphor for death. I'm not convinced by this because Anat descends to the underworld to fight Mott, and that does not mean she dies. Towards the end, the sun god descends to the underworld to bring Baal back up, and it doesn't mean he had to die. This is why some scholars suggest Baal had a substitute die for him. However, Menninger could be right in Baal's descent does mean he literally died and left behind a body, as humans do when they die. But the underworld is considered a place that one could travel to, which is why the other gods go there to look for Baal, so this is why I'm not convinced. Furthermore, Mark Smith notes what we have of the Baal cycle never recounts Baal's resurrection. It just refers to the god El dreaming and realizing that Baal is alive, but it doesn't necessarily refer to him returning to life, only that Baal is alive and could have just been missing or hiding. Smith also takes note to the fact that there is no mention in any of the 70 ritual Ugritic texts of Baal being revived or resurrecting. Ahmad al-Jalad also notes the existence of an Arabic inscription that echoes the Baal cycle. However, surprisingly, if his interpretation is correct, it doesn't say Baal dies, but is only cut off, which if reliable, would shed light on what happens in the Baal cycle and may indicate Baal was never thought of as dead. Ultimately, I think Mark Smith has the best interpretation of the Baal cycle. The authors are not suggesting Baal literally dies in their view, but they are using the death of Baal in metaphorical terminology to represent the death of the king and the installment of a new king. Baal was not a fertility god or a vegetation god, but a storm god, and he has affinity to other Hittite storm gods that simply disappear for a time. Some of the most striking similarities are with the Hittite god Telepinu. Both are storm gods responsible for nature their disappearance issues a divine search so nature can be watered. The sun deity also partakes in the search, and both are looked for throughout the mountains, and both legends issue concerns for the royalty. Baal also relates to another disappearing storm god, Narek. He leaves by hiding in the underworld, similar to how Baal descends to the underworld to fight Mott and then disappears. Now Smith also brings up noticeable differences as well but they don't seem to be major issues to overtake the similarities. And the Baal cycle shows literary ties to the death of the king. Baal's death reflects the demise of Ugritic kings, but his return to life heralds the role of the living king to provide peace for the world. Death is the form the disappearance of Baal takes. Baal does not choose to disappear. And as a divine king, his inexorable disappearance takes the form of a royal death. In contrasting the narratives concerning Telepinu and Baal, sleep and death are two ways to indicate the absence or disappearance of the god. In other words, Smith believes the Baal cycle refers to a disappearing Baal, metaphorically being described as dying, to mirror the death of the old king and the installment of the new king. On the divine level, this is explained as order and conflict, and it is described metaphorically from the literal human level of life and death, as well as drawing from the natural level of abundance and desiccation. Now, this is not the consensus, 
and no scholar can really be said to have the final word here. As I said, Medinger does raise some good points about the death of Bale in the epic. But even if Medinger is right, and Bale is a dying and rising god, this is hardly relatable to Jesus' death and resurrection. Medinger explains at the end of his book that the gods he goes over are nothing like what Christians espoused. The dying and rising gods were related to seasonal cycles, whereas the death and resurrection of Jesus is a one-time event, not repeated and unrelated to seasonal changes. The death of Jesus is presented in the sources as vicarious suffering, as an act of atonement for sins. There is no evidence for the death of dying and rising gods as vicarious suffering for sins. The Jewish idea of resurrection was about a human dying and coming back in the same body, immortal. And this is something different than a deity who went to the underworld and returned in conjunction with seasonal cycles. So even Medinger teaches dying and rising gods are nothing like Christian and Jewish beliefs about resurrection. So even if he ends up being right that Baal, Melkort, Hercules, or Tammuz are actually dying and rising gods, this is understood as a completely different category than Jesus' physical resurrection. So once again, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Baal.